So I previously made a video about how I increased my MCAT score 13 points in just three months of studying. My two biggest sections where I increased the most were my science sections, where I went from a 126 to a 129 in Chem Phys and a 124 to a 130 in Bio Biochem. In this video, I answer one of your guys' submitted questions about how to maximize your Bio Biochem and Chem Phys sections of the MCAT. Let's get into it. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you who may be new to the channel, my name is Terrence. I'm an accepted medical school applicant and I'll be starting medical school this upcoming August of 2020. Hopefully the coronavirus doesn't stop us from doing that, but that's the goal. I previously started a series on my channel where I take your email uh, questions and requests and I make a video about them based on your uh, email to me. So in this video, we'll be continuing that series. And in this one, we're going to be talking about how to maximize your MCAT science sections. So this is an email that I received from uh, someone even before I started this channel series. And I wanted to take a little bit of, of what they sent to me and kind of dissect it a little bit and talk about um, the MCAT uh, science sections, what to study and how much depth is really necessary when uh, maximizing these scores. If you're interested in submitting an email request to me, just check the description down below. I have all the instructions on how to do so there. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you check that out. So she says to me here in this one, I don't, I do know in general, I have never been that good at organic, organic chemistry or physics, especially organic chemistry. I first want to stop here and just point out this fact. Um, a lot of people, and it was the case for me, uh, we put a cap on ourselves as far as what we're good at, uh, what we've had experience with in the past. And a lot of the times, especially when approaching a big test like this, where everything is intertwined, uh, that could put a huge mental strain on us. And I know for me, I was always you know, somebody that wasn't super, super strong with genetics or cell bio. Uh, and I would tell myself I'm not that good at these sections and I would just brush by them. I put them to the side when I was an undergrad. I kind of just did what I could to pass the exam and I kind of never really dug deep into it. And the biggest change that I made was accepting that I had to take the time to learn these subjects and admit to myself, yes, I might not have been good at them in the past, but I will do whatever it takes to be good at them in the future. So the first thing, you know, a lot of people say this, I'm never, I'm not very good at this and I'm not very good in this section. Um, you know, try to make that change uh, today and try to make that uh, change in yourself and that mindset uh, to be able to conquer your goals. So that's one thing I want to just make a quick point at. Uh, she kind of mentions it in her first sentence here. She goes on to say, you know, do you think doing eWorld for Orgo uh, may help learn it better? I honestly always feel that when it came to mastering Orgo chemistry um, for the MCAT, not really knowing what I should memorize mechanism wise, you know, not really knowing what material she should study. I do remember on the second MCAT, the first chem phys passage I encountered was orgo related in the context of a lab experiment. I really was just blindly guessing bio biochem section. I also recall some questions where they said if student changes X about the experiment for Y outcome, what would they need to change? Uh, these kinds of questions seem like they should be straightforward. But again, I honestly have no idea on the actual test and I was really annoyed. I really could, rem I wish I could remember the answer choices to give you an example, but I can't remember right now, but I feel like some things I had just never seen before ever, but I guess it probably just comes down to not knowing the lab techniques and knowing things better. Do you think UWorld may help with this? So I previously made a video on UWorld and why UWorld is so important. So if you wanna hear my take on UWorld, make sure to go check out that video. But the first thing I wanna address here is uh, the MCAT and how you could be shocked and look at and get to your MCAT test day and say, I've never seen this before. This looks so weird and so unique. That was me on my first MCAT day. I remember the exact, a uh, very similar situation to her where the first question on my test was an orgo uh, question and it was something with labs or changing kind of like what she was saying, uh, changing one thing to lead to another. And I felt like I prepared so hard and I, knew everything I needed to know. And then this, they just threw this curveball at me that something I've never seen before. And this was likely for me just because I didn't have that depth of knowledge. And I found out on my second uh, go around that that level of depth and knowing things to a certain depth will allow you to uh, conquer things when you kind of see them for the first time and they look abstract or the MCAT wants to present them in an abstract way. So I just want to say that to say, you know, on my first MCAT, I definitely felt those feelings too. So you're not alone. 
and one of the biggest things that you can change is knowing uh, your content to a certain degree of depth and being familiar with understanding why certain organic chemistry things happen, why certain things in science are happening versus just understanding and knowing the surface level facts. The next question is now how much depth is too much depth and how much depth and how do I know that I've studied certain things to a certain degree of depth? And yes, you should know everything, but it's impossible to know everything. Uh, you have all these different resources and all these different books that if you knew everything front and back, yes, you would probably ace the MCAT, but it's impossible to know everything. What I tried to do was I focused on really understanding the things that I was weak at. So it's kind of counterintuitive to think that way, but in a subject that I was really weak in, I made sure I took the time to understand why certain things were happening. Certain foundations of organic chemistry, certain foundations of chemistry in general, bio, uh, biochem, understanding why certain things are happening will help you um, take abstract thoughts and take abstract pr presentations of science and really uh, break it down so that you can understand it to your level, even if it's something that you've never seen before. And the MCAT will often test in this way. They'll rarely ask you, hey, what is this thing? What is the equation for this? What is uh, the organic chemistry reaction for this. If they do, you just want to say thank you, check that off and move on to the next question because you know it because you memorized it. What they'll most likely do is what they uh, she mentioned here where if you change X, what will happen to Y in the outcome and uh, everything is typically intertwined. So you, even if you're doing a chemistry physics section, they might intertwine some biology there and this vice versa for bio biochem, you might see some physics and so you might see some chemistry in that section and you're, it's important to not get thrown off when when that happens. So let's just say, for an example, you have an equation like Basuli's equation. You know it, you memorized it, bam, it's right there. And it's measuring, let's say, volume flow rate uh, in a physics qu equation. So what the MCAT will do is it will rarely say, hey, what's Basuli's equation uh, for this volume flow rate? It will often present it in a way that's unique. So if you're doing your studying, you think, all right, Pusuli's equation, flow rate, what in the body is affected by flow rate? What is uh, maybe the kidneys? So, all right, so the kidneys are affected by flow rate. Good, now I know that the kidneys are affected by flow rate, but how is flow rate changing? How is blood flow changing? How is blood pressure changing based on the kidneys? Well, you could say one way that uh, the kidneys affect blood pressure and flow rate is through uh, a hormone called vasopressin. Where does vasopressin act? So now we went to physics, now we went into a little bit of biology, physiology with kidneys now. Where does vasopressin act? Well, it acts on the collecting duct. So now I'm testing my ability to know biology and physiology. All right, it's acting on the collecting duct. How does it act on the collecting duct? Well, now we're going into a little bit of cell bio where it increases aquaporin channels within the collecting duct to allow for water to flow down its concentration gradient. Well, concentration gradient, that's now going into chemistry. Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, when you increase one side of the equation and it, it decreases the other side and allows for flow or just general um, flowing of osmosis down a, a gradient. So now we're in chemistry and now we could go back to biology and say, well, how does that gradient affect the body? How does it affect blood pressure? Uh, where does vasopressin come from? Does it just stay there? How is that hormone activated? Well, it's activated via the hypotuitary uh, or hypothalamus pituitary axis hpa and it's released from the posterior pituitary uh gland so it's all these different things that happen that interchange in science and in medicine and that's how the mcat kind of wants to present it to you in these abstract ways and if you know certain things to a certain depth where you're able to jump from topic to topic and memorize these have these different names and terminologies memorized it will serve you very, very well on the actual exam when they kind of throw these curveballs at you. And when you're reading through the passages, you'll be able to say, okay, they're testing them on uh, kidneys. Maybe they might test me on flow rate. Maybe they might test me on uh, the different uh, sodium channels or potassium channels that are being affected by the ki uh, kidney and different hormones that are acting on the kidney. So you're constantly thinking ahead of the, the passage and you're kind of thinking into the questions. And that's when you know your depth of knowledge is really solid and uh, you've built that foundation so she goes on to say here um, back to the second part of the email i noticed your videos your biggest jump was in bio biochem from a 124 to a 130 that is huge and amazing jump uh thank you so much uh she said i love to achieve a similar improvement you can definitely achieve that improvement 
one of the biggest things is content knowing your content and i'll go into that a little bit more here on my last attempt i went from a 123 or i scored a 123 a slight improvement from her 122 she feels like she studied way more uh way harder the second time do you think your improvement was due to you going harder on content memorizing in certain areas i also have known that khan academy but truthfully never got into it uh do you think khan academy was good for raising your score uh any other suggestions uh so i'll first mention the khan academy i think i did go into a little bit of khan academy but i focused mainly khan academy with uh, certain just certain elements that maybe were confusing to me like gen genetics and different things like that that were my weak points so definitely use khan academy it's very very good uh, resource i also used it mainly for psych soch though but not as much in my science sections i had a pretty good uh foundation with my science section so how did i increase my um bio biochem section so three main things I could say attributed to me boosting my science sections in particular. The first thing is I studied content like crazy. So she mentioned, you know, she asked me, did I just go hard on studying? Absolutely. I went to the, uh, actually the Princeton book of uh, bio biochem. And I went through the entire book and I just highlighted all the chapters, what not actually highlighted, but I made my own review sheets and I took out all the things that were important to me and my weak points and what I didn't know. And I put them into an, uh, a word document. So I had every single chapter um, defined and every single chapter uh, made into a review sheet for my personal use uh, based on my uh, strong points and my weak points. And what I did was I just studied that religiously and made sure I knew everything from that document. The second thing was kind of luck where my last semester of school before I took my MCAT, I was taking cancer biology and I was taking cell signaling. And those were two uh, upper division courses, 300 plus level courses that really uh, strengthened my foundation of cell biology and cell signaling and protein biology. And a lot of the times, and luckily for me, a lot of the times the MCAT likes to use cell signaling and, and protein and DNA experiments and also cancer biology uh, examples for their bio biochem section. So I was very familiar with a lot of the experiments because of what I had learned in that class. And I was very familiar with uh, a lot of the terminology and how the MCAT presented things in a very uh, high level way, a uh, very um, scientific way that somebody that isn't in cancer bio research or cell signaling research uh, would probably not be exposed to on a day to day. And the last thing was that I did research as an undergrad. So doing research as an undergrad kind of put me into the mind state of approaching things like a scientist approaching my mcat questions uh with a different perspective and a and more of a scientist perspective and that came with me knowing my content very very well but i was able to really read through the passage and ask myself you know why are they doing these experiments why are they uh want, why do, what happens if i change this in the experiment i'm reading through the different you know proteins or different uh let's say protein structures and if i see something that's hydrophilic or hydrophobic i'm saying to myself okay what if i change this where would this hydrophobic part be in uh, protein if would it be on the outside would it be on the inside you know what if i change this to a different amino acid how would it affect it and i'm thinking like a scientist now and that comes with knowing your content and knowing your content to a certain level of depth but that approach and you know just me being in research and being exposed to doing research as an undergrad helped me have that certain mindset where I'm constantly problem solving as I'm reading the passage. So those three things were, were definitely big, just studying the content constantly, being exposed to the different experimentation and uh, you know solidifying that knowledge through my upper division bio classes. And the, the lastly, just approaching the, the questions like a scientist at the end of the day. So lastly, I wanna wrap up this video, kind of speaking more about content and exactly what to focus on when it comes to content and memorizing. I know that it's very tough, especially in you know bio biochem sections, even the chem phys section, what do you have to know? What do you have to memorize? In the chem phys section, a lot of this stuff is based on the content. Physics, you have to just know your physics formulas down. You have to make sure you know every single formula that they present to you, whether it's in the Kaplan books, Princeton books, self-study, knowing all the formulas and just being able to quickly come up with it if you know that the the formulas for power if you know the formulas for 
force, if you know the formulas for momentum, all these different things, if you know the formulas quickly and you see, let's say it's power and you're talking about a, a, a circuit and you know current and resistance and or uh, voltage, let's say you see voltage, you see current in the passage, you're automatically going to be thinking about power, P equals IV. So it's so important to just know those things down so you can easily make those connections um, when you're studying. As far as bi uh, bio biochem, I have a list of different things that I know for sure I had 100% memorized and these were things that just helped me just put things together and piece them together. Uh, all the amino acids by name, the three letter, the single letter, all their structures. I just knew them front and back. I knew which ones were hydrophobic, which ones were polar, which ones were nonpolar, hydrophilic, charged, non-charged. Um, all the intermediates and structures for glycolysis, Krebs, electron, electron transport chain, everything that branched off of it from lactic acid, ribose pathways, all the structures, uh, just knowing them front and back was uh, huge for me. And it was just, it was just something that it didn't, I didn't allow that to be a cripple for, for me. And they, and they like to test that stuff a lot. Uh, all the sugars, all the uh, main sugars, their structures, how they function, uh, all the things as far as enzyme kinetics and how everything's re related to, you know, Michaelis Menton. Um, make sure you have that down. They like to test. I think I saw at least enzyme kinetics once or twice on every single practice exam I took. And it was just something that constantly came up. So you have to know it front and back. Uh, the fats process of making fat, breaking down fats, uh, nomenclature, just in general. Uh, if you see something that you don't know, just write it down and keep a note of and understand what it is. Try to help yourself by breaking down different words, uh, you know, fossil, diff understanding different structures of phosphoglycerides, components of the cell membrane were huge for me. All the bio biochem lab techniques, uh, organic chemistry lab techniques, all the main organic chemistry uh, reactions and why they're happening, not just the actual reaction themselves and you know the list goes on and on but i and i probably missed some stuff that's really important if you feel that there's specific stuff that you did uh, make sure you put it in the comment section below but the biggest thing is if you see it on a practice test whether that's aamc or even practice questions aamc or uworld um for the most part if you see it it's fair game so make sure you know it if you see it, it it's fair game that it could come up on a future test um don't just study the high yield stuff it's important to have that stuff down packed but if you see something that looks a little weird looks a little funky understand why um the thing is happening and or just you know memorize it or write it down and to memorize it later so that's the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful once again if you would like to submit a question to me via email whether that's a video or in a regular email make sure you check out the comment section or the description down below and uh it has all the the details that you need for that thank you again for watching this video subscribe if you're new like the video if you enjoy this video thanks good luck in your mcat studying and let's get it